Okay. It's time to get painting. painting all morning so my painting desk is a disaster area I've got a nice clean palette Minnie's ready to go lots of clean brushes well most of my brushes are clean I just had somebody visit the studio and I forgot to forgot to clean my brushes before uh, stopping to talk to them so this one's not in the greatest shape now but what are we gonna do all right, let's get the zoom perfected. Alright, so the plan today, last week we painted the, uh, the Vampire Lady, today we are going to paint the Vampire Lord, and we're going to go with a very um, traditional look for this guy. We're going to give him a black cloak with a fancy looking red liner. We're going to go with a very pale skin tone, we're going to make it look like he's standing on a mountain top. And uh, we're going to make a bit of a, well, we'll see how we go, but the general idea, we're going to try to put a bit of a glow, like he's looking over a village that's burning or something like that in the distance. That's, that's what we're going for. Um, as we go through, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you uh, want to put questions in the chat, you're welcome to do that. And, uh, or just ask out loud. It's all good. And if at any time you want help, just drop a photo of your mini in the chat. I'll see it, and we can have a quick chat about where you're making, what your, uh, what progress you're making. Okay. There we go. Everything looks to be running as it should. Okay. So what we're going to start by doing is getting our palette loaded up with the colors that we're going to need. And as I said, we're going to go with a kind of a traditional look. So the first thing we're going to need is quite a bit of black. We're going to use uh, dragon black today. So dragon black for the outside of the cloak and to make the, so that we can see the, the volume of the cloak with highlights, we're going to use um, a bit of a purple color. I'm going to use night sky indigo, but you could use pretty much any purple you want. And we are going to be using ghost white, not correction, snow shadow. First, and then ghost white to highlight the black, and a little bit of pure white at the end as well to kind of bling up the, the shiniest bits. For his fancy frilly shirt that he's wearing, we're going to use ghost white, sorry, snow shadow, ghost white, and pure white, which we already have in the palette. For his skin, we're going to use my favorite color, burgundy wine. It's going to be our kind of dark background color for the skin. I think I forgot to put this one on the slide, but I'm using Reaper's 9067 Rosy Shadow as my first color in the skin tone. Oh, that one's almost out of paint. I have to get a new one. And then I'm going to use Polished Bone as my skin tone. So I'm looking for a kind of a warm, very desaturated, off-white, grayish color. That's going to be my main skin tone, so it's going to look very pallid. And I'll highlight that with a bit of uh, pure white as well to do the highlights on the skin tone. Then for the inside collar of the cloak, we are going to use Blood Red, Reaper 9003 Blood Red, 
and 9005 Phoenix Red. This is going to be the inside of the cloak. We're doing pretty good so far, except this is the first paint, but the nozzle was clogged up. Grab my little pin here. Clear the nozzle. There we go. Some red, and we're going to use fire red to do the highlighting on the interior of the red cloak. There we go. We're going to use uh, a different series of reds we'll use these three reds to do the um, the fire effect when that time comes but we're not ready for that yet and I think that is uh, I think we need a stony gray color so let's use reverse uh, stone gray we'll start with shadowed stone I think it's a basic reaper color so stone, uh, shadowed stone nine zero eight five, and somewhere on here, I've got stone gray as well. Yeah, Reaper nine zero eight six stone gray to highlight the stone on the base. I think that is everything we need to get started. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some base coats on. I'm going to start by painting the exterior of the, the whole cloak black. Um, his coat is also going to be black and that includes down here. We're going to do his shirt. He's going to be like a bright white color so this little bit of frill here is going to be quite white and the part of his sh shirt that sticks down below here will do that white as well I think. Uh, his pants are going to be black. His boots are going to be black. It's going to be a challenge to find a way to make those stand out from each other. And then the inside of the cloak is going to be red. So I think the easiest way to do this is start, I think we'll start by painting the stuff that's going to be red, red first, so that we can uh, distinguish it from the things that are black, and then we'll do the black base coat. So we're going to give our red a nice, solid foundation. So I'm going to take burgundy wine, and I'm going to mix that 50-50 with the first red color. Remember, you don't have to match the reds that I'm using. You can use whatever red you like. What this is going to do is give us a nice dark red color to be in the shadows. And then we're going to brighten it up from there with the lighter reds. So we'll start by painting this inside the hem of the, the cloak there, up by his left hand. And then we're going to paint... everywhere on the inside of the cloak. Now I'm not thinning the paint with water, I'm just using the paint straight as is from the bottle. The key thing you're going to notice me doing is whenever I load my brush, I roll the tip of the brush in the paint to make sure I don't have too much paint on there and to make sure the paint is mixed well uh, into the brush. And then when I go to paint on the mini, I don't end up with a flood. The flood is usually caused by water in the brush pushing paint which is too thin out of the brush onto the mini. So we're going to avoid that problem by not having a lot of water in our brush and not over thinning our paint to start with. We're going to do one layer of this paint. Now one layer is going to be good enough for me because I already did a bit of a zenithal highlight. If you are starting with a mini which is completely black, you might find that you need two coats of this but you probably still shouldn't because this color is quite opaque and we are going to be using it as our shadow color. So it doesn't need to be very, very bright and it doesn't need to be a perfect base coat. When we do the repeated layers of red over the top of this, the layers are going to start to look smoother and smoother. And any imperfections in the base coat are going to get covered over. So I'll paint the interior of his collar now. There's a little line of this that runs along 
his shirt. Just, just a little line of where the red's going to be visible along, along in there. There'll be a little bit of it visible underneath the edge of the cloak there. And then we want to make sure we paint the rest of it behind his head. So that's all the interior of the cloak. And as I'm looking at it, I think this is going to be a good color to use for the inside of his mouth. It's quite a dark red. So I'm going to use the tip of my brush and I'm going to gently fill in his mouth. He's got very cool teeth showing. What I don't want to do is put so much paint in there that it fills in the details and hides those lovely vampire teeth. So just be cautious not to overload his mouth with his paint. All right, there we go. So there's our red base coat or starting coat of paint really. And now we're going to do the black, uh, all the black areas. So I'm going to load up my brush with this dragon black. And as I said, there is a lot of black on this mini. Now if you've already primed, sorry, already put a first coat of black paint on your mini, like with the spray paint or whatever, um, you may not to need to do too much work here. But the key thing is we want to be able to highlight the black by mixing the next colors of this series with the black. So whatever black you're going to use as your main painting color today, you do want to go and reapply this color over everything that's eventually going to be painted uh, as black. So that's going to be his coat. We want to go all the way into the shadows so that it meets up against that red we just painted. All of that. That little bit of his shirt there I think is the bit that's going to end up being white so we'll leave that. Oh I see now. He's got a waistcoat. So he's got his proper jacket. Which goes in there. And in there, and then he's got a waistcoat underneath that. Okay, so that's not going to end up being black. We'll make that a different color. I'll work that out when the time comes. And we'll paint everything else around it black. So the pants are going to be black. <coughs> Boots are going to be black. I, I know one of the things I said in the previous videos is the first thing you got to do is always know what light direction, what direction light is shining on your mini. Sorry, I skipped that step. Um, as I described, we want to have it look like there's a village on fire or something in front of him. So there's going to be a secondary light source coming from in front and to his, well, to our left. So the main light is going to be from the top right from our perspective, so coming in this way. Okay, so that's the direction that all of our highlights are going to point is towards that side of his head. And that should make him look quite dramatic. So key thing is you're putting on your first coats of paint you don't want too much paint because it'll take a long time to dry and when we come back to start doing highlighting on it it'll still be wet so when you apply your your paint make sure that you spread out the paint so that you get a fairly kind of consistent single layer of paint but without any like puddles of thick paint those little puddles will take sometimes it can take hours to dry if the paint's quite thick we want to be careful not to end up with those puddles. We're going to treat his hand as though it's skin, so we're going to paint the collar or the cuff of his jacket up to the edge of that. But don't paint his hand. And we'll swap around to the other side. Paint that whole glove.
Make sure we get the top. Keep working our way around. Get the top of the cloak. Sorry. There we go. I'll make sure I get underneath this collar. Under there. Working our way all the way around. Doesn't really matter what kind of brush you use for this. You don't need a particularly special brush or anything with a particularly fine point. But what I do find is that uh, using a fairly large brush is helpful. This is a, a Raphael brush. But uh, so it, it does keep a pretty good point on it, which gives me lots of control. But the most important thing is it carries a lot of volume of paint. So I don't have to keep going and reloading the brush again and again and again. It means I can keep painting for quite a while, which means that overall I'm going to be painting quite quickly. So helpful to use a fairly large brush. Now I missed a spot in the top of the shoulder in there that's supposed to be black. We'll make sure we get that now. go back and keep working our way around. Make sure we get this black all the way to the bottom of all these folds. One of the real challenges painting black is to have it still look like black when you're done. Quite often um, when we try to do a lot of highlighting and shading on black, it ends up turning into another color. It starts to look like a, a color in the environment around it, or it starts to look gray, or some other color. So we want to make sure that we leave most of the surface showing black. We don't want to paint it another color, which can make it a bit of a challenge to um, give it the appearance of having you know, like a swirling volume or something like that, like a swirling cloak blowing in the wind. We still need to highlight and shade the black, but we have to be a little bit careful about how much of that surface area we make a different color. And I've heard lots of different people talk about this. Lots of people say you want to have at least 75% of that black surface area stay black. And uh, I think that's a pretty good um, start point for considering how to paint black is to make sure that most of the surface area stays black and keep the shadows and keep the highlights focused. How do you put a shadow on black? Well, one of the popular ways to do it is to put a dark blue into the black and that dark blue combined with the black will cool the black and your brain perceives cool co colors as being further away. So blue in black makes your brain think that the black is further away and therefore maybe deeper in shadow. That's one way to do it. Um, the other way, oh, I mean not the other way, there's a lot of different approaches. Another approach is not to use black at all but to use some other color like a very dark green or a very dark blue and by um, controlling the contrast with that color. So if say you're going to use a dark purple as to become your black, you're going to rely on a lot of yellows to make your grays so that the purple appears to be darker than it really is and your brain will perceive the purple as the black. So there's a lot of different color theory approaches you can take to, to shading black. We're going to keep it simple today, and we are not going to do anything fancy. We are just going to highlight the black using some purple and blue and rely on the darkness of the black just to be dark enough that we'll believe that it's highlighted and shaded. That's the, the approach I want to take. All right, so we'll let the black to dry. Um, I missed one spot in there. Let's get that in there in this little crook of his elbow. Okay, and then we need to do a base coat on the base, 
So I'm going to paint gray. What is this color? Um, Reaper Stone Shadow all over the base. So that when the time comes, it's going to be nice and dry. Start painting there. Normally, I would leave painting the base till later. But where we're eventually going to have a lighting effect on the base, I want to make sure I've got the base coats on it and nice and dry well before I get to that stage so I don't have to um, slow down the that process of adding the light colors and wait for stuff to dry, especially at the end of a painting session where we're going to be painting for a couple of hours here. To get to the end and then have to wait for another base coat to dry is a bit of a pain in the neck, so we'll get this done now Oops. and it'll be ready when we need it. I'm just painting the whole base that color. Okay, there we go. And right, so that waistcoat. I'm kind of liking this color, this burgundy color. So I think we'll paint his waistcoat. Um, that burgundy color. Now I already painted half of the waistcoat the wrong color so I'm going to paint over that with burgundy wine and I'm going to paint all the rest of this waistcoat with burgundy wine including that belt in there And it's quite a dark color, so that it should make the two different stir, um, that other leg match the rest of the the rest of the coat. So that piece that I painted black should be about the same value, the same darkness as the area surrounding it from that. And then we'll figure out how we're going to highlight that later. Okay, so where are we at now? We need to do. I think we'll leave the, the white shirt to almost the very end. That's the thing we're most likely to accidentally hit as we're going along. So we'll leave that to the end. We've got his hair and his skin tone to do. So let's do his skin tone. I'm going to take that burgundy wine and I'm going to mix it 50-50 with uh, rosy skin shadow. And that's going to be my starting skin tone. So burgundy wine and rosy skin shadow doesn't really matter what color you use, just pick a um, kind of a warmer, slightly darker colored skin tone as a start point. And we're mixing the burgundy wine in to give it a bit more opacity and to make it a little bit more red. We don't want him to look like he's alive, he's a vampire after all, but we want him to have a little bit of warmth to him. Make him look like he's at least animate, if not alive. Okay, so we'll do that hand. And we're also going to do the face with this color. So when we do the face, we want to avoid getting this too far up onto his hair on his temples. A little bit is okay, but not too much. Paint over the, the eye sockets. Try not to paint in his mouth because we've already got that dark red color in his mouth. This is my first color, so I'm not super concerned about the light direction just yet. But we are going to be concerned about that in a moment. There we go. Give him a starting skin tone and don't forget to get his ear. Stick that under his hair back there can't tell if his ear is visible on the other side. I'm going to go with no. Pretend that it's not visible. Okay. And we're going to let that dry. So, while we're waiting for all those colors to dry, we're going to go back and start working on the red on the inside of the of the cloak. 
So I already did burgundy wine mixed with red. So I'm going to add more of the same red into that mix. And we'll do another coat of the red color. Now we know that our light direction is this way. So now I want to start thinking about where is the light going to hit and not hit. Coming from sort of, I'll put a mark on the base to show the light direction. It's going to be something like this. Something like that, okay? So light coming in that direction, where is it going to hit and what is going to be red? So I'm going to say that it'll hit inside this collar up there. So we'll give that another coat of red. It's going to be a little bit of it. Right here, although his head is going to make a bit of a shadow, we're not going to worry about that too much just at the moment. Then I think this area of his coat, or the inside of his cloak, is going to get catch that light coming from above. So I'm going to have my brush strokes coming down from under his arm towards this this curve of the cloak here. And I'll just come up from underneath and pull my red up that same point. So we kind of get a double layer of red in the middle there. And this, oops, sorry, drifted. There's a bit of a raised ridge of red there. I think most of that is going to catch the light coming from the front. So we'll paint that red as well. There we go. I think down between his legs down here, this lowest part, not right up by the bottom of his coat and not right in by his left boot but by his right boot. I think the light coming in from that direction is going to reach in there. So we get a shadow at the top and a shadow on that side and it'll be illuminated in there. Moving on to this part with the light there, I think the lower part of this cloak He's going to catch some light, so lighten it up down there. Okay. Let that dry a bit. We're going to go back to the skin for a moment. I'm going to reapply that red color from earlier in his mouth because I managed to paint over his teeth. So I'm going to put that color back in. And then I'm going to use straight burgundy wine, not mixed with anything. I'm going to put that in the eye sockets. And this is going to be like the shadow color in his eyes. So I'm just completely filling the eye socket. And we know that the light's going to be coming this way. So I'm going to put a little bit of this under his nose to make the shadow there deeper. And he's got very sunken cheeks, so I'm going to put a dab of this those on the cheek on each side to make them look really sunken in and then we'll let that dry so his face is gonna look pretty pretty messy at this stage but that's all right let's do the same thing in the shadow areas on his hands so we'll put this under the palm of his hand so in there I know the palm of your hand tends to be lighter, but uh, at the moment we're treating that area as though it's in shadow. Where the thumb meets the forefinger, we want a shadow in there. And if you can, we want to put a line it's just not going to allow me to do that in focus. We're going to put a line between his index finger and his middle finger. And then the same thing between his pinky and his ring finger. And that'll help make the shape of his hand stand out a bit better. And we'll put a line of red all the way around his hand.
It's the, the shadow where the skin meets the black coat. All right. I like it. Now, our red is nearly dry. I think it's dry enough. So now we're going to do our next coat of red. And it's going to take a few coats to build up the bright red color that I'm looking for. So we're going to go back to our starting red color. The color I was using was uh, 9003 Blood Red from Reaper, but you might be using a different paint. doesn't matter. We're going to use that same paint, not mixed with any of the, uh, the burgundy wine. And we're going to go back and do this, a similar highlight to the ones we already did, but just a bit smaller. So when I start up here under the the sleeve. I want to start a little bit further down this time, but I'm going to pull the highlight down to the same place as I did before. So right around there on the outside of that curve, and then I come from underneath, start a little bit closer to that curve, and the brush strokes go up to meet the ones that we just did in the middle. And same thing on that ridge of cloth in his cloak. And we're going to look in his collar. This part of the collar is going to be the brightest. So we'll do that. And I think the other side's not going to be quite as bright. So we'll get a little bit at the back of the collar there. But we'll leave a shadow. Oops, sorry. Leave a shadow there. In fact, you can see the shadow my light is casting. We'll use that as a guide and we'll paint. out around the outside of that to give us that illusion that there's a shadow being cast from the light and then we want to do this area down between his legs again cover about 90% of that previous highlight and then the inside of the cloak same thing again not quite as big a highlight as last time, but again we're going to bring the highlight right out to the tip of the that fold of cloth. Like it. All right. And now we need to start thinking about black. We're waiting for that red to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our dragon black and we're going to start mixing in uh, some of this purple and this is going to be our first highlight so what we're going to do we're going to we start with the dragon black we're going to do 50 50 dragon black and purple as our first highlight then we're going to do a purple highlight and then we're going to do uh, the snow shadow ghost white highlights on top of that and then we're going to glaze everything back down with the black to smooth it out a bit and then go back and hit with pure white highlights just like on the edge where of um, the rounded edges of the, the cloak where it might be the shiniest if there was light reflecting off of it. So what we're looking to highlight now, we're considering light coming from this direction, and we're going to highlight any raised surfaces facing in, facing in that direction. So as we look at this part of his sleeve, the top of the sleeve is going to be facing the light, so I'm going to put quite a large highlight of this mixed color on there. And I'm going to go about halfway down the diameter of the arm and my brush stroke is going to be pulling upwards because the light direction is above him. And I'll do the back of that arm now the same way. I think about half of that, this color. I'm going to do the same thing on his sleeve. This is the sleeve of his right arm. And I go all the way down the front of this jacket um, and now I'm looking for little raised shapes so there's a bit of a raised shape there and there's a little hollow and then it comes back up again so where it comes back up again I'm going to put a little highlight there's like the impression of uh, there's a belt or something underneath that so we're going to give that a little highlight over his knee the jacket kind of has a convex shape so we're going to put a highlight of this color on the raised part that shape. Okay. 
and we're, we're focusing on the jacket and the cloak at the moment. We're going to look at the, so this is the left breast of the same jacket. We're going to give that kind of a round shape highlight of this color. And now I'm looking at this part of the cloak. I think this whole raised area of his arm, right there facing the light, you want to do, kind of pretend you can see the shape of the arm through that. And I'm painting a purple highlight all the way along his arm, including the round shape of the top of his shoulder. I give it that color as well. And then I'm looking for all these little raised lines, and they all get a highlight on the side face closest to the light source, and that's our light direction there, remember. So my brush strokes also go from the bottom to the top so that I'm depositing more of this lighter color towards the top where the light is going to be strongest. And I'll do that along the edge of the cloak as well. Okay, now we do the back of that cloak. So our light direction is there. Okay, it's down there. So we're going to highlight everything, assuming light might be kind of just a little bit coming across the back of his jacket. So all of these raised shapes get a highlight on the peak of the raised shape. On the light side, and our brush strokes go towards the light. Now I know that side of the mini is going to be in essentially total darkness from our perspective, but if we don't put any highlights on the black, the natural reflectiveness of the paint is still going to have natural highlights on it. So we're going to put our own highlights on it to control how shiny it looks or how brightly lit it looks. If you don't do that, the black is going to take over and the black is going to look shinier than you probably want it to. So essentially we're, we're making the black look darker by taking control of the natural highlights on it. All these raised shapes underneath. The light's going to hit the top of this curve, so we'll put a highlight up on the top of that as well, on this curved part of the top of the cloak. Now, as we add these highlights, if it starts to feel like it's too light color, just remember that we're going to darken everything down again with a black glaze. So this part down here, we want to do the, the same, same thing, thing, but we, we want, want these highlights, highlights to be smaller and really focused towards the top. Now, I don't know if any of this is going to get hit by our secondary light source, but if it is, I don't want to have it already highlighted. The, the colors, colors where you need to highlight, highlight the black. We want we would use different colors to highlight our secondary light source. So I want these highlights to be quite small. But now this one here, that almost faces sorry, this almost faces directly towards the light. So I'm gonna make my highlight on that actually quite large. And I'm pretty sure my secondary light source is not gonna hit this at all. A nice big round highlight on the side of that swirling cloak facing the light, but I'm not going to do it down on this tip. I'm going to focus towards the raised part up there. And then, what have we left out? I think that's pretty much everywhere that needs a highlight at this stage. Okay, so then we're on to the boots. And I'm going to use this color to highlight the pants and the boots as well, but when we do the later highlights on the pants, um, I'm not going to do very much of a highlight on them. I'm going to make the pants look quite dark. And I'm going to use the stone gray, I think, to highlight the, the boots. So the boots are going to look more like a leather color. 
So I'm looking for the larger round shape, so the top of his knee, where a little bit of a fold of his pants is visible, and a little bit of his calf muscles making the, the pants bulge out gets a highlight. His left knee gets a highlight. And then on the boots, I'm looking for um, kind of the, the edge, anywhere that there's an edge, or the boots have a fold in the leather. So there's the, the cuff of the boot, there's a line down the front which is like a zigzag, that definitely gets a highlight right out to the tip of the boot. And if you were a little bit aggressive with the stone gray color like I was, make sure you uh, put this purple black mix out and cover that stone. Remember, our light is coming this this way, so I'm going to highlight that front edge of the boot with this purple, along his toe as well. It's a bit like doing a non-metallic metal effect to get shiny leather. And then his calf muscle shows right there, so I'll give that a little bit of a highlight as well. And the cuff of the boot. There we go. All right. So we'll let that dry and make sure that's really solid dry and we're going to go back and do the same red color that we did before. Do another highlight of the exact same color. And this time I'm going to let that red highlight be a little bit bigger than the last one that I did. The key thing here is um, I'm pulling the brush strokes towards the center of the highlight so the brightest red is going to end up where I want it to be brightest on the outside of that curve right there. So I'm going to reach a little bit further up into the shadow this time but the brush stroke direction always pulling the paint out towards the height of that curve. I'll start a little bit lower this time, reaching a little bit further down to the black with the red. But because the red's so transparent, it's really going to only become brighter where those highlights overlap in the center. The red's not really going to affect the black that much. We'll do the same thing down here. Re-emphasize this red on the highlight down below is his, uh, if you will, between his legs, between his boots. Do the outside of this um, curve of the low part of the cloak. We do that again exactly the same way. And then we're going to do the inside of his collar. We can pretty much paint most of the inside of his collar, but don't don't cover that shadow that we made in the last step. Oops. There we go. So that red is becoming quite bright now. I quite like it. That's going to be brighter still. And what that's going to do for us is make our black look blacker. That's the general idea. Okay, so now we're going to pause. We've got give us a bit more time for the black highlighting to dry and we're going to let the red dry so let's go back to working on the skin tone now I've been using quite a huge brush up to this point I'm going to switch to a smaller one much much smaller brush now, this is the one I wrecked earlier today so hopefully it's going to be alright I let a, let a green paint dry in it by mistake but well, we'll see how we do clean it up later. So to go back to my skin tone, I've got that 50-50 mix that we made earlier with the um, burgundy wine. I'm going to grab a hold of a daub of that shadow, rosy skin shadow. I'm going to add that to the mixture. So it's going to be darkened down a little bit by the previous mix. And I'm going to roll the tip of my brush to get the brush nice and fine pointed. I don't need very much paint on here. And now I'm going to, I'm going to start by working on his hand. 
keeping in mind the light's coming from from our perspective high right so I'm gonna have my brush strokes go in that direction I'm gonna start on his index finger and bring the brush towards his knuckle and stop and then leave a little space and then I'll start another line of paint and pull that up towards the knuckle on his hand what I don't want to do is cover over all the shadow I added previously so just a little bit at a time I'm going to put some on this thumb his thumb kind of folds underneath so make sure we get that shape caught and then where his index finger meets his thumb we'll do that one again bring back the shape of the hand now this is probably going to go out of focus Let's see if I can get it to focus again And now we're going to do the same thing on those two extended fingers. So I'll just start at the tip, go back towards that knuckle, rotate it a little bit so I can hit the next one in. Same thing. I want the light to be brightest on the top of those knuckles. And then work back towards the knuckle on his hand and make a little dot. I'm going to make a dot on each of those knuckles. stroke of paint up to it. Now, these other two knuckles, kind of harder to get angle on. There we go. Same thing, I'm going to put a little dot on each of them. Okay. There we go. Oops, sorry, I drifted off there. Two little lines like that. And this is still quite a, star a dark color, so I can go down to this part of the hand to do this. But bear in mind, this is definitely going to catch our backlighting, or a secondary light source. We don't need to put too much work on that part of the hand, but we definitely need to do the top of the hand. So now we're going to... So the same way as like on the back of my hand, we've got these lines. right? We're going to put lines like that on the back of his hand. don't have to be perfect, they don't have to be connected, just line them up to go all the way up to those knuckles, all the way to the knuckles right there on his hand. There we go. That's going to give him kind of an expressive looking hand, which is what we really want. Okay, now I'm going to fix the focus and start working on his face again. There is his face. This uh, rosy skin triad tends, in my experience, to dry out really, really fast. So I find I quite often have to clean my brush while I'm working with it. Sometimes add fresh paint if I need to. And now I'm going to work on his face. Now our light is, from our perspective, to the right. So I think I'm going to start with his ear. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of paint on the top of the ear to bring the shape out. And then I'm looking to put some on the temple, quite close to the hairline, just a little bit. What I want to do is pull the brush across his brow from left to right and lift the brush off on his right temple, or left temple from our perspective. Right temple from our perspective, his actual left temple. Then I'm going to highlight the side of his nose facing the light, so our, our right, and I'm going to hit the top of his cheek, facing the same direction. Now he's got great big bags under his eyes, which we want to keep. We want him to look sinister and dark. 
So we're going to keep those dark bags under his eyes unpainted. But we are going to paint that little bit of his eyelid if we can. If you can't, don't worry about it. But that'll help bring out the shape of his face. Now, he's got his mouth open, so his, mu his lips are pulled quite tight, but we still have to highlight the Cupid's bow underneath his nose. And he's got a strong muscle running down the side of his face, so I'm going to put a line of this dark color along that muscle down to his chin, like that. And that's going to make it really visible. And we'll do the same thing. There's, there's like a secondary muscle beside it, so we'll do that one as well. And then behind it, we've got the his jawline, so we'll put a little bit of this color on his jawline. But I don't want to fill in that sunken cheek. I like that sunken cheek. We'll leave it. So now for the other side of his face, I'm, I'm intending that the other side of his face is going to get light coming from our secondary light source. Okay, So I'm not going to do too much on that side of his face. I will do the side of his chin. And I think we should do that muscle on this side of the face, same as we did on the other side. That's probably going to be enough for that side of the face. I accidentally got his eye, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to just keep going with skin tone for a few minutes. I'm going to use this straight, rosy shadow, and I'm going to repeat all those highlights on the lit side of his face. So we'll do the hand first. The same highlights again on his hand, so the thumb. And each of these highlights should be slightly smaller than the ones we did last time. So you definitely don't cover right up beside his, uh, the cuff of his coat. I'm going to leave that as a shadow. His knuckles. back of his hand. Good enough. That's all we need to do on that. Okay. And then we need to do the same color on his face. So the same highlights we did before, just smaller. So, temple. Oh, I forgot about the ear already. Look at that. Temple, do the ear now since I forgot it, a little bit on that um, eyelid, the raised round part of that cheek, side of the nose, side of the nostril, side of the cupid's bow, just on the side facing the light. And then those muscles going down his face, side of his chin, and just a bit on his jawline. There we go. Now, so while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, I'm going to fix that blob of paint I put in his eye by mistake. That work. And now I'm going to make a mix of rosy shadow and this bone off-white color.
Sorry about that. Okay, so I mixed uh, the bone color that I'm using here, this uh, polished bone with the skin tone to lighten it up. But I want it to be kind of desaturated, so we're going to end up with a very pale looking pallid skin tone when we're done. Okay, same thing as before, on his hand. So we do the back of the, the knuckle on the finger, back of the hand where it meets the thumb, taking care to preserve our shadows. Same thing up on the back of the two knuckles on the fingers. And keep focused on the on the knuckles there. Uh, it's been an interesting few interesting week here in this building. They had a fire last week and there was a lot of construction that happened because of the fire. And then uh, they've painted the basement, so everybody who's smelling the fumes from this massive paint job in the basement keeps coming in here to ask me if it's if I'm responsible for the smell of the paint. But it's uh, paint on an industrial scale. <laughs> it's not, not something that I'm responsible for. All right, so painting the, the temple, the edge of that eyelid, tip of the ear, raised part of the cheek, side of the nostril again, side of the nose, and that Cupid's bow again. We want him to look really gaunt, so we're going to hit that a couple of times to keep bringing all these, sh we're going to keep hitting all these shapes with small highlights, keeping quite a bit of the shadow, and that's going to make him look really emaciated. And that's what we want. We want him to look like a classic style of, uh, of vampire. Okay. I'm going to jump. And, and this paint should dry within a couple of seconds. There's no fear now about going on, on top of this with these tiny little highlights of straight paint. So I'm going to go right to my polished bone with nothing else in it. And that is going to go back of the knuckle two fingers, knuckles on his hands, and there we go. Oh, we'll do the other two knuckles as well, just keep them all about the same value. And now we're going to put this white in the same place as before, tip of his ear, temple, put a little dot of it right in the middle of his forehead like he's got a furrowed brow. So we're not doing a continuous sweep now, we're putting little dots to pick out the shapes on his face. Pick out that eyelid again, the center of that knot, sh like the, the round shape of his cheek, side of the nose again, side of that cupid's bow, and then highlight individually those muscles yet again. chin. I'm going to give the tip of the nose an extra couple of daubs. There we go. We're starting to, starting to look pretty creepy. Okay, so this polished bone color is also a good color for his teeth and the whites of his eyes. So that's what we're going to do now. So we'll do the teeth first. So to do the teeth, I'm just going to I can't really tell if they're well sculpted um, fangs or not. I think they are. So I'm just going to put like a dot where I think those fangs should be. Rather than try to um, 
paint all the teeth and then make the fangs look longer. I think he's got a few teeth just visible on the lower jaw as well. Let's try to put a little bit of a dot on those. That's about as good as we're going to get on that. Okay, now he's clearly looking in that direction. So to do the eyes, we're going to do a simple two-step eye where we've already got his irises and we're just going to now paint the whites of the eyes. So if you can picture that, he's looking to, towards the direction of his fingers, so the whites are going to be on the opposite side of his eyes from his fingers. And we're just going to make a little diagonal curve in the corner of the eye with just one little dab of paint. And that's going to give the impression of an eye facing towards the light. There we go. That's all it takes. And now we have to do the same thing in his other eye in almost exactly the same position. This one's a little bit harder to hit, so if you make a if you miss and make a mistake, it's easy. All we have to do is refill it with burgundy wine. So there we go. Mine might be a little bit big in terms of the whites, but I don't know, I feel pretty happy with that. He's definitely looking to that side towards his fingers, and that's what we wanted. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of pure white in the skin tone. I'm going to mix the polished bone with the pure white. I think I'm using solid white. I'm going to do one more round of highlights on his, uh, on just, on the, the most prominent parts of the skin on his face. So, tip of his nose on the side facing the light, that knot in his forehead, that part of his brow facing towards the light source, the corner of his eye by his, by the cheek, on the cheek by the corner of his eye, I guess is what I meant to say. That eyelid again, Side of that nostril one more time. Cupid's bow, chin, and that muscle. And the tip of the ear. There we go. Now he's got a really well-defined vampire face on the go. Pretty happy with that. Okay. So at this point, all of our red should be dry. So... The next red I'm going to be using is Reaper's Phoenix Red. Now I kind of ran out of the previous red on my palette. I'm going to add a bit more in. And of course it's dried up again already. This is 9003 Blood Red. Just getting a bit of a restock. Or not. I might have to get a new paint ball. Ugh. Whole lot of gunk coming out of that. Well, that's the advantage of having a miniature store. Brand new bottle of Blood Red right off the shelf. Brand new paint, so I'm gonna give it a really good shake up. Make sure I haven't grabbed the wrong thing. Reload. There we go, lots of paint now. Okay, and I'm gonna grab some of that. And I'm going to mix my Phoenix Red into it, 50-50, Phoenix Red, and that Blood Red. So this gives me a half step between these two paints. And I might be asking, why didn't I use the other red that Reaper offers that's a step in between them, the Fire Red? 
I'm saving the fire red for something else. I don't want the paints to exactly match, so that's the only reason why. All right, so now with this 50-50 mix, I can hit all the same places that we were doing before. We'll start up here. Now I want to start a bit lower down. Like previously, I was reaching into the shadow. Now I want to stay a few millimeters away from the edge of the shadow. But same principle. Brush strokes go down first, and then we're going to reverse direction. The brush strokes will go upwards with the um, highlights overlapping. So the highlights from below overlapping with the ones from above, where I want the highlight to be the brightest, right in here. So a lot of people say that red is hard to paint. It's not hard to paint if you give it a good foundation to sit on. And that's really the key. So we've got a really solid foundation now for our red. And this red is going to be really, really bright. Same thing down here between his legs. Give it a highlight again. And out on this part of the cloak. Let's see if I can get the focus a bit better. Right in there. My brush strokes working towards the front where the light's going to hit the inside of the cloak directly. There we go. Very, very red. All right. Now, I've been forgetting to do the little bit of red that shows on the inside of his cloak. Do some of that now. It's supposed to be there, and in here should be just a touch of red visible. Don't really need it. I'd like to do it anyway. Inside the collar. Nice bright red. Under this loop here. And the other side of the collar, keeping in mind, once again, we don't want to cover over that nice drop shadow that we made from his head. There we go. I really like this red. Okay. Now, we're going to do all those highlights again with that phoenix red not mixed with anything. Just use it straight. And do all those highlights again. Focus on the edge of any, like any edge like this which is a little bit like sharper. And make sure we give it a nice strong bit of this highlight. Start from the top and go down, start from the bottom, come up, meet in the middle. Same with this shape in here. Start at the top. So then meet in the middle, coming up from the bottom. Now this zone in here is going to have a highlight all the way across it. So we're going to do this again, but quite a bit smaller than we've been doing it. Join those two zones together, and now come up from the bottom to meet there as well. You end up with quite a saturated bright red highlight in the middle of that part of the cloak. This is what we want. We want to give it a bit of a satiny, shiny look. 
and now we do the same thing down below between his legs and there's a bit of a, like a ridge in the middle there that shape like it's like a little triangle so we're going to focus this towards the center and then get the bottom edge of that shape and then kind of fill in like a triangle shape of that color the brightest part of this highlight is going to be in the center on that little ridge because his leg is casting a shadow, right? And then we're going to do this on the inside of the cloak. The edge of the cloak is going to get quite a bright highlight. If we pull that down along the edge. This is a bit like what they call edge highlighting. Um, trying to get that paint to go along the edge smoothly. We want to make sure we don't have much water or any water if possible in our paint the water makes it much more difficult to control getting the paint smoothly along those edges so that's another reason not to use water or any other thinner until you really need it the other reason I advocate not using thinners for this sort of thing is because you've learned to control the paint without it and that improves your overall brush control and your ability to paint in the long term you'll be better off and then when you do need to use something like a glaze or a um, you know, glazes particularly you've got the brush control you need to have the glaze end up where you want it to be so I'm going to put a little bit of this color up by where his hand is and just a little bit below that along the edge of that cloth the edge in there just a bit under here And once again, the collar. Most of the collar, but really focusing towards the top of the collar now. Brightest along that front edge. Got a nice bright red happening now. I love it. Okay, and then we're going to do top edge of the collar there. and the front edge along there. I really like this phoenix red for this sort of rich, rich, satiny looking red. There we go. The contrast between the pallid skin and the bright red. Now, usually when we do these classes in person, this is where I ask people, is that light enough to count as our highlights? And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, it's really light. And I go, no, it's not light enough. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to make it lighter. So I'm going to take this orange, and I'm going to grab my pure white, which I know it's a cold white. I don't really care. In this case, it's about making the value of the orange much higher. So I mix the pure white in with the orange 50-50, and I'm going to get a much lighter, kind of peachy orange looking color. A little bit of a gross color. But what I'm intending to do is to paint this into those highlights again, smaller than the last ones we did. It's going to lighten them. And then when I go to do my glaze of my blood red, this will show through it, okay? And raise the value of these highlights that'll show through that red. Do all these highlights again, smaller than we did just did with that bright orangey Phoenix red. Really focused on where it would be kind of most shiny if this was a reflective cloth. In this area, we want this to be quite a small highlight running across to link up with that one on the other side. Same thing up from the bottom, meet in the middle. So that we get that overlapping effect in the center, making our highlights extra light. And then come up along that ridge meet in the middle. I want that one really bright, so I'm going to come down from the top again. Okay, now down between his legs, same thing, about two-thirds of the length of that previous highlight, focusing towards the bottom and on the side towards the light source. Doesn't need quite so much. 
and then down here we're going to focus on this front edge and then the inside edge work your way out towards that little tip which is showing in the light Okay, just a touch up by his hand just a bit up by his shoulder underneath that little round bit and now we're going to be focusing quite close to the top corner of that collar so I'm going to do an, hit the edge but pulling out towards the light source and then not right at the edge but a little bit in from the edge the back of the collar pulling forward Link the two up. Let's see what it looks like from above. Oops, sorry, I drifted. Okay. And then on the other side, really just focusing on the edge closest to the front. Just this edge here. Now I ask the students again, is that light enough? And they all know by now that it's a trick question. They all say, no, it's not light enough. And I say, good answer, you're right. So I'm going to mix another big daub of pure white in there. And we're going to do them all one more time. Now remember, part of the reason we're putting so much effort in this part of it is that we want it to be really light so that it makes everything else look darker when we're done. Okay, so same highlights again, smaller. And the smaller you make these now, the shinier the cloth is going to appear. Down below his legs. Nice, tight little highlights. All the areas we just hit, but smaller. I forgot to take my cloak down there. Now, as I said, we're going to glaze the red over it. So we're going to go all the way to pure white now, knowing that the, gl the glaze is going to dull it down again. So I'm going to grab pure white. It's not pure white. It's uh, Reaper Solid White. I'm going to do these highlights again, right in the middle of the space. Just did really small, and it's really going to make the cloth look shiny. Okay, same thing down here, but really small. Just the front edge of that bit of cloth by the tip there. Not going to do it in there. Not going to do it in there. I will do it on the outside edge of that little round shape and on this side of the collar, but not the other side. Why? I just want to make it brighter and lighter and all that good stuff on the side facing our light source. There we go. Now it's starting to look like a pretty shiny, fabulous cloth. Okay, and we're going to let it dry now so that when we glaze it in a couple of minutes, the paint doesn't get reactivated. By putting the glaze over it okay all right so what's next I think next we're gonna do 
this jacket in here. I think what we're going to do is get a bit of burgundy wine, mix some purple color, whatever purple you happen to have on there, with the burgundy wine, and we'll highlight that jacket with this color. So it's going to be like a sort of a mauve, plum, whatever kind of colored purple jacket. This is not getting a huge amount of effort. It's not really a main focus of the figure. We'll just do a little bit of a highlight on there. Use the same color on the belt. Same color on the jacket underneath that white blousy shirt he's got going on. And we want to do a little bit on the outside there. Okay. Now we're going to use that purple, I'm using, like I said, night shite, what's it called, night sky indigo, use it straight, right over all the same areas, but keeping it, making a smaller highlight now, about, I'm not super happy with that, but that's going to have to do for now. Okay, so while that's drying, we're going to do that little cravat thing he's got going on. Grab the snow shadow. And we're going to paint that thing snow shadow. I think that's supposed to be a gemstone right at the nape of his neck, or at the top of this thing, but... can't really tell. Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be a gemstone. Decide later if I want to paint as a gem or not. There we go. Snow shadow. Time to start highlighting the black again. So we had a 50-50 mix of black and nightshade purple before, or what, whatever this not nightshade purple, night sky indigo, or whatever purple you've got. I'm gonna make a fresh batch of it. And now I'm gonna start lightening it a bit by adding in uh, the snow shadow. So I'm gonna make a mix to one side here. So why am I doing this? I'm trying to make a lighter color which still contains components of the colors I've been using so far. So that when I put it over as a highlight, it doesn't stand out too starkly. And then regardless of how stark it is, when I glaze the black back over at the end, it'll make it look a little bit smoother. That's the general idea. So now I'm going to start same as I did before, start on the left arm, up close to his, sorry, it's the right arm, left from our perspective. I'm looking for any raised shape. So like on this cuff there, there's a bit of a raised shape. And I'll put this color as a highlight on the top. You gotta remember my light source is um, over his left shoulder, right from our perspective. So I'm trying to keep the highlights pointed in that direction. A little bit of a raised shape like that. And then I'm going to hit the cuff close to the light source. And also, this is a, a cylinder shape, so I'm going to give it an additional small cylinder highlight In the direction of my light source. Well, this part of the arm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep them in line. I'm going to keep that cylinder highlight in line down that part of his arm, like that. And there's a little bit of a raised area of cloth in there. That's going to get a little bit of this highlight too. Like 
that. As I make my way further down, the front of his jacket's got a little round shape there. Give that a highlight. We're going to do the seam on the edge of the jacket. Give that a highlight. There's a few little raised areas like that. We'll give those all a little bit of a highlight with this color. Remember what I said at the start, we don't want to paint too much of it any other color except black or it'll stop looking like black. So these are quite small highlights, limited in surface area. Okay, Just enough to bring out the shapes. We'll keep working our way around that coat. There's the other bit of the hem here. We're just going to get the bit which is most forward. We're not going to do the whole thing. There's a part which is in shadow under this coat. It's probably going to be barely visible. We'll just give it a little touch. And where it starts coming out under the, the cloak again, here we'll give it a bit stronger of a highlight. Where the light would catch it better. Okay. And now we need to do the back of that arm. The back of that arm is not going to get much in the way of light. That's probably enough, probably too much actually. We're going to do the back of the cuff like that. And we've already got a highlight on the front. So we don't need to do too much more. Maybe a little bit up towards the, the cuff up here. Right on the edge up there, close to the hand, like that. It's probably enough. In fact, I'm sure it's enough. Okay. And now we need to start doing the rest of the cloak. So we'll do it as we did last time. We started in here. Oh, left that one part of the coat that we definitely have to hit, which is right up here by the lapel. A couple of small highlights. And try not to do what I did and put the blue right over the top of your lightest highlight from the previous color. If you do make a mistake, you can use a wet brush to clean it off a little bit. And then just put your fix the highlight, put it back. There. Okay. Now this arm, we want to have the highlight on this arm here be parallel to the arm shape, same as we did up there. So this highlight runs parallel to the arm, the light's up here. This arm runs like this, so we're going to have a highlight in roughly the same position, so reflecting the same light source. And I'm kind of ignoring the, the, the texture that's sculpted there treating it all as one kind of cylinder shape out to around there. And then I'm going to go up the arm the same way and do a highlight on the center of the shoulder. So there's my arm shape in there. And we'll do the shoulder up there so that that way we don't lose the arm when we're doing this highlighting. And now we want to go back and hit all the edges of all these raised rounder shapes, like these folds of cloth. Remember, light is to the top right from our perspective, so that's the side of these shapes that we want to hit. side facing the light source. This is one of the areas where using washes doesn't work very well. Because if you were to put a wash in there, the, sh the shading effect is going to occur on the top of that shape. Because that's where gravity and surface tension is going to hold it. So you end up with a shadow where you would actually want your highlight by using a wash on this kind of a texture. So definitely controlling the highlights manually is a better approach in this particular situation. 
There we go. Okay, mix up a little bit more paint because I'm running out. How are we doing for time? Okay. And now, I'm going to look at the back of the cloak. And I know my light source being that way now, but down here, this outside curve this needs a highlight to bring out the shape pretty much its whole length. So the same way as we did the arm over here, we're doing this curve of the cloak along here. So it's going to be along like that. We're kind of ignoring the texture to do this. Work your way up along the back of the cloak, up along the back, up to the back of the shoulder, like that. And that's going to make it look like his cloak is a little bit shiny. Right to the back of the neck. Like that. Similarly, we've got this round shape. So that needs a bit of a highlight. Not too strong. Like that. Bring those two together. And this shape on his back. There's that ridge needs a highlight approaching the ridge, but not really past it. Like that. To make the ridge stand out. That's probably enough. Okay. And then the light coming past is going to catch the outside of this shape over here. Just a bit. So we put a highlight there as well that matches this shape. And this shape is essentially like a, a sphere in many ways. So we'll highlight that over there. There, that's our general highlights for the back. I think maybe we want to do a little bit more just across the top of the shoulder there. Just a bit more. Okay, that's enough. And now we got to go back and do the, highlight all the ridges on this side, but not on the shadow side. So we just tie all of these together. Anywhere that we've got that raised, rounded shape, we're going to give it this highlight. So it's going to go down all of these. Excuse me for a moment. All right, so we keep highlighting those raised shapes only on the side towards the light source. this collar. I'm going to bring the shape out a bit more as well. There. Good enough. Okay, it's pretty good. And we're going to do the same thing on the boots and the pants. So for the pants, I'm just going to put a few little dabs of color on the knee. Still using the same color. calf. 
And now I definitely want to make sure I highlight the, the cuff of the top cuff of that boot. Make it really visible. And then all the way down the front of that shape, the round shape on the shin. right out to the toe of the boot. And that's to show that that leather is reflecting the light coming in from the side. And we're going to do the same thing a little bit further in on that the calf muscle, like that. Okay, on the other leg, a little bit on the knee, front of the leg, same thing again, cuff of the boot, and then down the shin, following and tracing that folded edge of the leather all the way down the cuff, but focusing mostly on the side of the boot towards the light. go. Okay, making good progress now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the snow shadow again. And we're going to mix another big dollop of snow shadow into that color. I'm going to add a little bit of water this time, but just because mine is drying out quite a bit, you want to avoid adding too much water if you can. And based on what we've all been doing so far, I bet you can guess what we're going to do now. We're going to do all the same highlights again, but smaller. No more than half the size of the previous ones. And this is where it gets difficult to make things look black. The highlights have got to be really small. Much, much smaller than we did with the red even. arm, a little bit on that one on his bicep. The ones on the front of the jacket don't need much at all. Do want to make sure we bring out that shape of the hem of the jacket. That's part of what defines the jacket. And just a touch on that corner down there. Other lapel gets a little bit bigger of a highlight because it's closer to the light source. Tiny little highlight there on the coat breast. These pieces down under here can be completely ignored until you get to the bottom cuff. Sorry, bottom hem of the jacket. We want that to be a little bit more visible where it sticks out underneath. Then we're on to the cloak already. So earlier I missed these highlights right up here on the shoulder. Just do them with the blue right now. There we go. And then this one that we did along here, we mirror that down here just like we did before. Very small. Right along and then up give it a small highlight on the shoulder this time, very small. Okay, very small. And then all these other shapes get their small highlights to bring them out with that same color. So these little folds of the cloth, we want to try to make them smaller than the ones we just did. So these ones I did before go all the way down to the bottom. The ones I'm doing this time only come a few millimeters down from the top of the jacket. Much, much smaller highlights. When we get down to the bottom down here, this edge 
It's going to get a bit of a focus. Edge of the cloak. Same idea. Highlight along it. Just much smaller than what we did before. Remember, it went all the way up over to the shoulders. So we'll do that again. Smaller than the one we did before. Right up to the top. a little bit across the back of his neck. Just to pick out those shapes. The light's coming this way, so we, we don't need to do much more here, but we do want to catch that part of the cuff of his jacket where his arm is raised. We want that to be a bit of a focal point. Don't think we need to worry about that part out there. We'll just leave that as it is. Um, light coming across this way. I don't think it's going to catch too much back there. So we'll just extend these highlights that we just made just a little bit to kind of make sure we don't lose those shapes entirely. So just highlighting the highest part of those raised edges of the cloth in the cloak. Now we're going to go crazy. No, not quite yet. We still got to do the same thing on the boots. Same ones on the boots. We're going to skip the pants. We're going to leave, leave the pants from now on. The pants are, dark, uh, are light enough already. So we're going to make the contrast between the pants and the boots by making the boots look really shiny. So we're going to redo these highlights all down the front of the shin of the boots. Try to make it smaller if you can. focus as much as you can on just the raised areas. Same thing on the other boot. Down the shin. Focused on the raised areas. Right out to the tip of the toe. Okay. There we go. Now now we're going to go crazy. We're going to do the same ones with unthinned snow shadow. You might have to thin it just a touch. Mine certainly is getting thicker as the day goes on. And we're going to do two more colors, right? So just bear in mind that these need to be small, but the ones that are going to go on top of them have to be smaller. So you don't want a lot of paint. I think I'm going to do the boots first. Boots is where I want to put my focus right now. So I'm going to put a little highlight with snow shadow along the cuff of the boot. I'm ignoring the one further in. I'm just focused right on the shin. Where that raised edge of the cloth, or the, the leather is. Anywhere that the shape is well defined is where I'm going to hit. Do the other one as well. And I'm focused more towards the light direction side of the boot. Right out to the toe of the boot. There we go. Okay, and now that gives you an idea of what we're aiming for. We're going to do that on his jacket and on his cloak as well. So we're focused right up there by the cuff, and we're going to put just those 
few little parallel highlights where the cloth would be raised and on the cuff. Not much at all. Same thing on that part of the sleeve. Just a touch. Up there on the shoulder. Doesn't need much on this front part of the jacket. Just a little. Make shapes don't get lost. Don't need to worry about under the cuff at all or under the uh, the cloak. Just a bit on the corner where it comes out from under the the cloak. And now the big bit is the. Oh, always forget that bit up there on the top. think we need to do a second coat of snow shadow on this little tie shape. So let's just hit the raised parts of that lacy curvati thing on his neck again. Okay, and now we're on to the main part of the cloak. So looking for those raised angular shapes in the cloth. Oops, sorry. Where's my focus spot? There it is. So, kind of mapping out the line that I want. And then I'm going to hit those shapes. Quite a small round highlight on the top of the shoulder. There we go. A few of those sharp spots just to identify them. Definitely need to hit that hem. It's not that hem, the edge of the cloak. Highlight in there. You can leave a gap now between there and this part of the highlight. And we need that separation to give us that illusion of it being shiny. Okay. Starting to dry up really fast here today. A bit more water. Right up over the shoulder to the back of his neck. go. And you know what comes next. We're going to do them again, but this time we're going to use the ghost white. Ghost white, pretty much straight, and these need to be very small, precise highlights. Otherwise you're going to lose that illusion of, of the shininess. It doesn't take much paint but you want them to be in, in, in parallel lines. So do the first one on the cuff there. Keep them nice and parallel. We're 
here way across. So actually we need to work our way down. We don't really need much down here. Just a bit at that corner will do. Part of the coat as usual. Center of that shoulder. the center of the ones on the sleeve. Bottom of the jacket again. Good side curve. Just a touch on those. Back of the jacket, back of the cloak, up here on those gray spots, and then in parallel dots across the back of his cloak out. There, and it's the contrast that we really need to make that look shiny, but also still look like it's black, okay? And we're gonna go one step further, we're gonna go all the way to pure white. Because remember, we're gonna be glazing this down with black at the end. So there we go, there's our pure white. Really easy to overload the brush with this at the end don't need much paint and yep you guessed it all the same highlights again smaller oh, I forgot the boots didn't I well, I'll go back and do the boots in a second Sorry, there we go. Uh, down there. And then across the sleeve. This is not the only way to make something look shiny. But it's a pretty good basic way to, to think about it and to learn it. all those shapes. Back of the neck. I want a little bit just out of the tip of that black there. Like that. Okay, so the boots that I forgot to do. Let's do those now. Start with the ghost white. I think you can guess where this is going though. Tiny little highlights. Really focused on angular shapes. a little bit of pure white really bling up those leather boots
Shiny, shiny boots. Okay. So that's good enough on the cloak and on the leather. What I'm not liking is that jacket in the middle. And I'm not liking the little cravat. So the cravat thingy gets the ghost white now to highlight it. Remember, really focused on the sight towards the light source. sure what I just did to my brush there but it wasn't okay I made a little bit of a mess I'm gonna fill that back in there oh well, I guess we can make that a gemstone I'll just paint that black call that a gemstone in the middle okay and now we're gonna highlight it pure white which is not gonna look very bright because we haven't got a dark base underneath it Same thing, focus on the edges and the side towards the light. Okay, there we go. Now for the jacket, this was the color I was using for the jacket, this purpley color down here. I think what we're going to do is just grab some of the flesh tone. I know that sounds nuts, but dab some flesh tone into that just to lighten it a little bit. And we are going to do dots to make it look like some sort of a velour felty kind of jacket so like the little buckles just put some dots on those that little zippery looking thing in there put some dots on those dots on this belt just kind of put some little dots all along it some dots up here in the shadow just to make the shape a little bit more visible and then same thing focus on the on the raised areas with the dots don't worry about the down in the shadows just put dot 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 and a line down there it's like a smoking jacket that's what I'm trying to think of there we go put some on the side towards the light like that lots of little dots Look like he's got a very expensive jacket on. We'll put some more flesh tone in there, make some lighter dots, and do them all again. Pick out the shapes. Nothing too complicated. If you were feeling really particular about it, you could make a pattern in that pretty easily. Instead of just making straight dots, you could do like, like a diamond pattern. Make it look like it's a Victorian or Edwardian cloth or something. All right, just kind of get a little mat with your dots to make it look like it's got some sort of a texture on it. That's, that's not, not beginner level stuff, stuff though, right? right? So, so that's, that's not work. If you're in, in the, the mood, mood you can do that, that. we're not doing that today. Just put, put some dots to create a highlight that makes it look like it's not a smooth, not a smooth surface like the leather or the other stuff. It's, it's, it's something different, okay? And we're almost at glazing. So we got to highlight the base first. So highlighting the base. I got my leather my stone shadow, and I had stone gray on the base on the palette. What you want to do is just kind of mix the two half and half, exactly what we've been doing before. And we're going to build up the volume of the stones by highlighting them in the direction of the light. So where lights is this way, we just start dabbing on dots of this gray color pointing towards our light source as simple as that. All we need to do, nothing more complicated. 
but we do not want to do it on that side, this side of the mini. Just focus on the side of the mini towards the light. I'm thinking based on our time that we may not get to the part where we add a bit of a back, but we might. You never know. Definitely want to need to highlight the stone so that everything else looks appropriately illuminated in context. If we don't, it's all going to look like the just just kind of weird. But if we put highlights on the stone as well, just where the light would hit it directly from that side, then everything else is going to look like it's lit appropriately. That's why when you're doing things like object source lighting or any of those more um, complex lighting studies, you always do the base and this environment as well so that it looks right. It looks right in context, but it doesn't look right with all this, without the details around it. Okay, is that light enough? No. Let's add some polished bone into that mix. Or whatever you, you were using for your flesh tone, doesn't really matter what color it is, as long as it's lighter than the stone gray we were using. And let's start hitting those highlights again. Just a little bit smaller than the last time just dabbing them on there. It doesn't have to be super precise. As long as they point towards the light. By the time we're done this, everything should be dry enough to glaze over. Oops, sorry, I keep drifting. I'm going to go lighter again, I think. Oh, look at that. Got it all over the boot. Use my spare brush to clean that off. There we go. Like it never happened. Well, not really. I'm going to have to fix that. Black again on that side. And back to happy little dots. Okay, now we're getting the picture. I think the only part of this I still don't like is that coat. So what if we were to add a little bit of polished bone into that mix? Make some really light colored dots. Now the problem here is if we put too many dots it's going to start to look too bright. So we look from our light direction. Where can we see on that jacket from our light direction? So we can really just see a little bit of that belt, that button, a little bit of the bottom of that belt, and I think just to make them more visible we'll hit those little bits of whatever those are, buttons and buckles. And then we're going to hit some dots along the hem there, and along here. And there's another little hem right there. We'll hit those with some dots. And then I think some dots right up the middle of the leg, right about there. So we're creating a highlight out of dots. I think on that side, just down towards the bottom. Just 
just a few. And that's the top of that jacket, so that's what we need to do. There's a couple in there. If you can't reach in there, don't worry about it. That kind of tightens it up a little bit. There we go. Now, glaze time. So the first glaze we're going to do is going to be the red. We're going to glaze all of this with the blood red. Not with the fire red, the one which is one, like the, the first red that we used. So what we do, we're going to mix that red about 50-50 with water, maybe a little bit more water than that. Don't want too much on the brush. I'm going to test it on my thumb so you can see what color I'm going to be using here. Alright, so it's it's about that thick. And what I want to do is I'm going to put on little dots of red and push them all the way across the surface. And then I go from the other direction and make put on a little layer of red and push the dots till they all line up together. Where I want those dots to line up is on something that's already red. So on this guy, in here, okay, it's already red in there. So that's where I want these dots to line up. So I'm going to pull all the way down across the white and leave the dots there and I'm going to pull up from the bottom make all the dots line up in the middle. I don't need a lot of paint for this. What this is going to do is dull down our brightest highlights, but also bring some of our red saturation back. And because the red, uh, our, our high value highlights, our very light highlights, are going to show through this very thin coat of red paint. But again, we want those droplets to end up. in this zone here. So now it's not as bright red as it was, but it looks richer because we brought our saturation back. And it's going to darken slightly as it dries. This is why we use a very thin glaze. If you use too thick a glaze, you could completely cover all your highlights and it becomes more difficult to bring them back. So it's better to do a very thin glaze and if it's not dark enough, do it again, rather than to do a very thick glaze and have to go do your highlights again. In this zone in here, I'm going to start at the tip and I'm going to push it into the back. Push it back. And then I'm going to start up in the shadow and I'm going to pull the red forward. Let my red dots end up in that zone right there. And that's so that I don't end up with coffee stain marks. Same thing out there, same thing in there, and under there, oh, got some on the cravat, oh well, should have been using a smaller brush. Very smooth and red now. All right. I'm gonna make sure I clean my brush really well. Don't want that red getting all over the place. And I'm gonna fix the tie where I made that mistake. Cover that up with the ghost white. There we go. Okay. Now. Let's do a wash, or sorry, a glaze of burgundy wine over this jacket. I'm going to do part red, part burgundy wine. And that'll put some richness into that color. Oops, my palette is drifting on me. So I'll put some water into that color, uh, which is there. Just 
test it on my thumb. A little too thick. Put some more water in it. That's better. Clean my brush out because I think I'm feeding more uh, paint into that wash. That's what I want right there. And now I'll do that across the whole jacket. burgundy wine end up down in here somewhere. There. Kind of like that. Okay, and I think I'm just going to put a little bit of this color around his lower lip just to bring a little bit of redness back into his face. There we go. Okay. So now all we've got left to do is glazing black. So for glazing the black, it all works exactly the same way. Although I think that rock is still too bright. Let's do something crazy. And get myself some more dragon black. And I'm gonna make a darker version of the stone gray. I mix stone gray with dragon black 50 50. And I'm going to paint that in the shadows, really darken the shadows up. I feel like the, the shadows aren't dark enough to match the cloak because the light's not hitting this directly. So let's really darken that up in there. Sorry if I caught you a bit off guard. What I did was I realized that the values of the stone back there were too high so they were too light so I'm going to darken them up before I do the the glazing so I'll know whether I've made things dark enough when I do the glazes on the black there we go that looks a bit better and then we need to wait for that to dry for a minute so I think I'm going to put more shadows back in the stone where the light wouldn't hit directly I'm gonna put shadows back right and I'm stalling for time a little bit for that to dry I'm gonna paint my base rim black since I've got the black on the palette let's paint the whole base rim Why am I doing it at this stage? Because I want to be able to judge whether I've not I've got the glazes on the black right, which is actually kind of the most tricky bit of this. If you make it too dark, all the highlights disappear, and then we're kind of left starting again to bring all of our highlights back. So I want to kind of get everything 
um, the context looking right before I do that. Okay, there's our dude. So now we've got to go and do our black glazes. So I'm going to grab a little bit of dragon black. And I'm going to add about two thirds water to it. So much more water than paint. And this paint is going to coffee stain terribly. It's black pigment, so it's a very dark pigment. And it's a lot of water. So the water is just going to push the pigment to the edge, and it's going to coffee stain almost right away. So we're going to work in zones and go slowly and carefully. So let's start with this section of coat. So I'm going to start, just check it on my thumb as usual. OK, it's not too dark. I'm going to start here. I'm going to pull it all the way down. And I'm going to push the glaze onto the black down here. And this area is already this black color. So if the glaze lands there and dries in a coffee stain, it'll be invisible because it's already the same color as the glaze. So I'm going to start up here by this sleeve. And I'm going to slowly pull this color down across everything, down right to the bottom. And then I'm going to let it dry down there. And you can see the difference between this part of the sleeve and that part of the sleeve now. That has really pushed that back. But the highlights are still visible. We're going to do this part of the shoulder now. Okay, this part of the shoulder. And pull the glaze down and leave it right in that socket of the shoulder there. Okay, next part is this part of the jacket in here. Same thing, we're going to push the black down into the little side of his arm. So we'll pull it down across there and push it down into the arm. Next we'll do this part. The bottom is still black, so we're going to pull the glaze across the top park it down on the bottom under there and then right away we'll do the other side so that we don't end up with a coffee stain by accident up there okay where's next okay the cloak is the big one right so let's do this part of the cloak so we've got black all through there on the cloak we're gonna start back here and we're gonna pull across all of this and we'll park the black glaze down here in these shadows. So push it across into those shadows. And we'll do the same thing from this shoulder working our way down. Along there. Okay. So we park it in those little shadow zones. I might need to make a little bit more wash, sort of glaze. Okay, so those are those zones done. Now this is the most difficult zone, but you get the general idea of what we're going to do. We're going to park it down here somewhere. So I'm going to pull it across the back of the cloak, off the shoulder, all the way down, and park it down here. So here we go, across the top, down across the shoulder, all the way to the bottom. And keep pulling it all the way down. And this glaze is thin enough that all those bright white highlights are going to show right through it. Uh, 
everybody was at the same Okay, so we keep working, keep pulling the glaze down, all the way down, right to the bottom. There we go. And those, you can see, they just show through the black. So it gives a shape to all those surfaces, but without looking like it's not black anymore. I'm going to do the same thing in this corner of the jacket in here along there and then push it in the corner and then we got one more area to do which is the boots the boots are black on the inside so we'll pull our glaze across this way and park it on the shadow side of the boots in there and the other boot now this black glaze is going to really dull everything down and some areas like the leather that we want it to look a little bit shiny we may have to go back and redo some of the highlights overall I'm pretty happy with how that's looking think based on the time that we are not going to do a great big backlighting effect we'll just leave it like that but I think what we will do, what we will do is restore just a few of those highlights so we'll just do some of the highlights on the on the black and we're going to go straight to the pure white We'll start in the areas that we started with first. So this coat is all dry, ready to go. So I'm going to put tiny, tiny little white highlights. Just dots, basically. Where's my focus point? There it is. Okay. Just dots. To bring those back up just a little bit. Okay, and remind us that it's shiny. Same thing up there on the shoulder. Just enough to be shiny. What's going on with my focus all of a sudden? There we go. The shoulder. and I think just a little bit back on a few key spots on those leather boots so like right on there sorry my brush just dried out on me of course let's do that there we go to bring the bling black a little bit in the black the other boot same way I think the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to put some reflection dots in those eyes, and then we'll do, we'll 
we'll do a speed gem and that'll be it. So reflection dots in the eyes, tiny little white dots. Pointing up towards the light source, there's one. There's the other. Okay, little tiny white dots. And for the gems, let's just do a super red. So we're going to start with our mixture of fiery phoenix red and white. We'll paint the bottom half of the gem that color. So our light is from this direction, so the bottom half of the gem means the side away from the light source. Like that, on those three gems. And we're going to grab that phoenix red. Put a daub of that right in the middle, but don't completely cover the previous layer. get the burgundy wine, my favorite color, and put a circle of that on top of all of these, but don't completely cover any of them, facing towards, paint it towards the light source, like that. And in a few seconds those will be dry, and we can call them, uh, call them We'll put a white dot on them and they'll be gemstones. All right, coming up to the end. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask or would anybody like a little bit of feedback on the mini they've been painting? side. Okay. So we're back on that one. That's pretty much it. We'll do the white reflection dots and then we are going to be out. So there's no class, there's no paint along next week. I'm going to be at a convention. So that's the, the 30th of October. I won't be here. But we'll be back on schedule the following week, same time. Three reflection dot gems, and there's our happy vampire. Last chance for questions. All right. I'm going to put up the schedule for the next class, and we will see you the next time.